Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I guess Brandon probably mentioned to you guys that they won our bounty last year at ETH Denver. Uh, so uh, if you build on the graph, you might get a bounty and you might get your project funded. So uh, that's a fun little uh, thing that happened last year. So um, today I'm going to be talking about um, uh, some of the bounties that we have today and specifically about this push uh, that we're starting to make uh, to make Web3 real. And, um, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, we've been going to these uh, ETH hackathons for a while. We've been, you know, in this ecosystem since 2017. Uh, there's a lot of really exciting development going on, um, but we're still not using a lot of dApps day to day. And, you know, we really believe in the ideals of uh, decentralization, and we want to see more dApps out there in the wild. And so hopefully uh, some of you guys want to hack on this stuff this weekend. So uh, before I start, uh, it's great. Everyone here just got uh, a really great intro to the graph. I think Brandon actually probably did a better uh, workshop than I've even ever done. So, so that was pretty cool to see. Uh, but I'm excited to announce uh, a new feature that we're piloting in beta this weekend. So you guys can play around with it. It was actually built by uh, Dorg, uh, which uh, got Jordan in the crowd right there. Uh, but I'm excited to announce that we're shipping GraphQL mutations, uh, which is a really sweet feature. Um, who here is familiar with GraphQL? Hopefully a lot more people now. Have you ever used mutations before? Yeah, so uh, mutations are GraphQL's way of making function calls. Uh, so you know, today, if you, you want to build on Ethereum using smart contracts, uh, you have to you know, submit your transactions directly. You have to maybe inspect the smart contracts to understand how those methods are meant to be called. And a lot of times, you may want to sequence many transactions together. And so you know, GraphQL is just this beautiful API language where, as a developer, you want to go to find all of the functionality that's available to you. And now you can do that directly with mutations. Um, so uh, have a play around with it this weekend. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so, so now, with this focus that we're making on building usable dApps, um, we believe that before we can get the rest of the world excited about decentralization, uh, we need to build applications that we within the crypto community would actually use ourselves, right? That solve real problems for us that you know, we'd choose um, for ourselves, that these are just the best dApps and the best ways of solving problems. Um, and, and so uh, our use cases that we want, you know, are uh, you know, uh, working with folks to build are around applications that we ourselves would use. So you know, the goal is to start by getting to kind of product market fit with an initial set of dApps. And uh, product market fit for me just means that of all of the options out there, you know, this product is a way that I want to, you know, solve my problem. And, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, doing a big push and our goal is we want to see five dApps with product market fit in the next six months. Um, and so maybe some of those ideas can start this weekend. Uh, then we want to get the crypto community to switch over, and we're going to do a lot of work on the community front. And then, uh, you know, these dApps should be able to grow just based on, you know, the quality of those dApps. And so uh, we've been working on this project called Everest that we're going to be releasing in, in a few weeks. And it's an example of this type of an application, and it's very simple. It's just a project's registry. Uh, and so we want to have every single project that's working in the crypto ecosystem on this registry. Whether you're a dApp, you're a protocol, a fund, you know, a dev shop, uh, we want you to be here. And then this can act as kind of like a LinkedIn, you know, uh, yellow pages uh, for, for businesses that are working in crypto. Um, let's see. And uh, you know, something that's very different between Web 3 and Web 2 is that in Web 2, you build like a single application uh, that's like a full silo in and of itself. And in Web 3, you know, all of this data is available on a global API. And that makes it so that people can build custom UIs, custom applications on top of this kind of global machine. Um, so, so these are a few of the specific areas 
um, that we would love to see people really dive into that we think is relevant to you know, everybody in the crypto community. And so that's projects, people, jobs, blogs, and events. And uh, for example, who here has looked for a job in crypto? Awesome, who here is hired or look to find other people to work with them? Awesome, who here has published a blog post? Who's read blog posts? Who's attended events in the crypto space? Who's wanted to find out what events they wanted to attend when you know, traveling out of town? Awesome, so these are all use cases that are applicable to us. And maybe you could think of a way that you could build an app that's better than the Web2 options for doing those things. So these are just a few of those examples. And so uh, to make your work easier this weekend, uh, we built a registry starter application uh, that is a stripped down version of Everest uh, that we think is a good starting point, but it's really just a starting point. And, and we want people to you know, experiment with this and uh, uh, you know, break it, add to it, change it. Um, it's really just a starting point. But um, this is basically a take on the TCR. So uh, who here has used like a TCR before? Yeah, not many people, but they were all the rage about a year ago. And uh, you know, I, I think you know, the idea of curating data in a decentralized way is pretty powerful, right? Like you don't want to have these centralized companies controlling all of the data. Uh, right, whether it's you know meet up with events or Facebook with blog posts, Twitter with what you read. So, so really, you, you want to have the data available in a decentralized way. But then, uh, how do you make sure that you don't just introduce a bunch of spam? And how do you make sure that you can have a certain uh, amount of uh, you know quality assurance within that list? Um, so we've uh, kind of iterated on the TCR concept. And, uh, and that's in this registry starter. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to show you what that kind of looks like. Uh, so I'm just going to be showing this in an Envision prototype just so it's uh, you know, faster to move around. But uh, uh, we've just published this, and I'll, I'll show you the code in just a bit. So um, this example boilerplate app is for uh, curating a list of tokens. But it could be used for anything. So, uh, in this example with the list of tokens, the idea is, you know, let's say I have a new ERC-20 token and I want it to show up in wallets, I want it to show up in coin market cap, these different kinds of places. I could come to this like registry and I could add my token here. Uh, now, if my token is some kind of like fraudulent token and the community decides, hey, we don't want this on the community registry, there should be a way for them to get it off. And that's that like quality assurance. Um, now, this version does not use uh, tokens for curation. So the way it works is anyone can come and add a token. And uh, I guess it might be hard to see, but I'm going to zoom a little bit. So, um, so you can come and add a token where you just add your symbol, your name, description, add a logo. Uh, so you add that information. And right away, you can add your token. Now, the, um, this registry assumes that there's going to be a listing fee. So that's what we do as a spam prevention mechanism. So here, we have it set to one die. Um, but it could be set to anything you want, depending on you know, how easy you want it to be to add something to the registry. If it's totally free to add to the registry, it's possible that uh, people are just going to spam it and add a bunch of stuff. Um, so now you can see kind of your tokens, or you can you know, browse the list. And it's very simple, again, just like contract address, decimals. Um, but if I see a token and I don't think that it should be on the registry, then I can come and I can challenge it. Uh, so that's the challenge function. And the way the challenges work is only people that are already on the registry can vote. And the idea there is, how do you actually determine vote weighting? And how do you, how do, you do voting? And so we have a proposal, which is very simple. Uh, we think that ultimately, the way that you need to do voting is using some kind of reputation. And uh, there's a question of what the right type of reputation would be. 
And I think that like reputation is a super interesting thing that um, you know we should all be experimenting with. Uh, but for this, we decided to take the easiest possible form of reputation, and uh, and that is just how long you've been on the list. So if you've been on the list, you know, for a very long time, you haven't been challenged off. That means the rest of the community thinks that uh, you know you belong on the list, and that gives you voice. If you've just been added, uh, there's no guarantees that you're actually aligned with the rest of the registry members. So, uh, so, so your vote counts for less. And uh, me as a single Ethereum address, I may belong, you know, I may have created multiple tokens, maybe I've created five tokens, and so I can come and I can choose which tokens I want to vote on behalf of. Um, so you could multiple select, and then you have to give a, a reason for the challenge. So, you know, they, they didn't, uh, you know, conform to, to the charter for this registry. Uh, and now there's an active challenge on the page. So you can see the voting period, which you could customize. Um, and you can see the votes. You can see that, you know, the, uh, you know, the votes here. And, uh, and now any other member of this registry can come and they can vote on this challenge during the period. And, uh, and at the end, you're either um, you know, removed or you get to stay on the registry. Uh, so, so this is what we built is like a, a very, very simple um, way to curate data in a decentralized way. Uh, you know, hopefully it re reduces a lot of the friction from TCRs, right? One of the benefits is you get added right away. You don't have to wait for people to let you in. Um, for, the, for the voting, it's a much simpler process. And uh, what's really cool about uh, curating data in a decentralized way is now other apps could start to use this. So I gave the example of like maybe a wallet wants to use this registry uh, in order to you know show tokens and balances and their UIs. Um, maybe I'm like Coin Market Cap and I want to be able to show a list of tokens there. Um, you know all of this data is very relational, and so you know if everybody's maintaining their own databases, their own registries. Uh, then we're never going to build Web3. Uh, you know, if, if we can actually get this kind of data where all of the projects are on a registry and they all have stable IDs, right, those projects can reference the people, right, the team members that are working on those projects. They can reference their jobs. You can see what are all of the blog posts that have been written by projects that are in this category, right? What are all of the DeFi events, right? When all of this data becomes available in an open, permissionless way with stable IDs and it's all linked together, then, you know, that's going to be the point at which this Web3 thing really becomes real. Uh, so I uh, hope that's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we're going to be here all weekend. Uh, helping people hack. This is just one idea. There's a lot of different things that uh, you know people build on the graph. And uh, how am I doing on time? You got it to about five, seven minutes. So if you want to take questions, okay, great. Got time for yeah, questions. I'll do questions. Just before I jump to questions, uh, I guess uh, Brandon showed the Explorer, but you know it's pretty exciting to see what kind of stuff uh, people are building. Right now we have this featured subgraph section at the top. But uh, you know, this is something that we're just kind of curating ourselves, and it's really slow. Uh, we're going to be releasing our launching our decentralized network soon, and when we launch the network, uh, the curation of these subgraphs is going to be done in a decentralized way, um, which I think is going to be really exciting. So we're no longer kind of the gatekeepers for who shows up here. Um, but you know, it's really cool to see what kind of stuff people are building. Uh, you know, D Dharma's building this uh, you know subgraph here for their Dharma Die. Uh, this is, you know, just updated. Um, have people seen uh, the new Aragon Court? Show of hands. Yeah, I'm super excited about Aragon Court. I think that thing is going to be rad. Um, so they have a subgraph here, and uh, it's kind of hard to to read the data, but um, you know, you can see the jurors and the disputes, and uh, you know the uh, you know the the appeals and, and all of the uh, you know. You can kind of follow along here, and this is what they're using to power their uh, uh, Aragon Core dashboard. So there, there's really no limit to what you can build on the graph, and I hope people have fun this weekend. Uh, so, so with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Really, no questions? Hey. The 
registry code. So it's not a yes, great thank question. you. It was bro it was broken on the DAO uh, site. Oh, was it? I don't know when uh, that DAO site got updated, but thank you. So I was gonna actually end with some links, and uh, we can also do a look at some code. So it's just. Uh, yeah, definitely always show the links. So we're at Graph Protocol on Twitter. Um, the registry starter is at our GitHub. It's github.com slash graph protocol slash uh, registry dash starter. Uh, that's the link to the Explorer. And uh, anyone who wants to compete for our bounties, make sure you join our Discord and post in the Hackathon channel. So in the example you showed, uh, when somebody put a, a, like a, a reason that they should be delisted, is it possible or is there an ability for the person that has listed that token to defend themselves in the same definition? Yeah, great, great question. So right now, um, you know, that, that, that could be a great addition, you know, for like a hackathon project, for example, to say what should that look like? Maybe integrating like three box comments or something. Maybe you could have a comment right on the page. Uh, that would be really interesting. Um, I think like discussion doesn't necessarily need to be on chain, could be on chain, um, but uh, yeah, d definitely there should be a way for them to kind of defend themselves. Uh, one more thing to mention about the way that we're thinking about these registries is that we, we think of them as separate from actual curation. So with curation, you're deciding whether something is good or not, right? You're like ranking it. Does, is this thing good enough to belong in this like special list? And we think that registries should be handled in like a multi-level kind of way. So there should be like one registry that basically includes everything that is, you know, meets minimum community standards. And then uh, there should be ways that people can then reference those IDs, right? That way you're like in the universe. And from there, people can make their own lists that's like, here's my favorite tokens or here's my favorite this. So every registry uh, we think should have a charter and like with Everest, we're going to have a charter that really specifies what qualifies as a valid listing. And that's something that should be very objective. Uh, you don't want people, I think, like voting on something like a global registry to be making s very subjective decisions. So, so the more uh, you know, clear the, the charter can be, uh, the easier it is to do the voting and, and uh, the more alignment there should be. Is the, uh, is the uh, registry starter front-end agnostic? Like, could you build that on any front-end framework, or is there a specific one that you have to use? Oh, I'm, I'm, people can use whatever they want. Um, let me just uh, kind of show the code a little bit. <clears throat> so we have a UI that started using React and Apollo, uh, but if, if, if you want to use like the contracts and the subgraph, and then build your own custom UI totally from scratch, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, you know, GraphQL is pretty well supported, so uh, you should be able to use any framework you want. Yeah, definitely. We just want to see people like, you know, bringing more interesting data on chain. You know, and that's really what that bounty is all about. So, you know, however you want to bring data on chain, that's, that's good for us. <laughs> Uh, and, and when we say data on chain, one thing I should mention about how this is implemented also is every entry in the registry is using an e the ERC-1056 standard. Uh, and then it, uh, that standard, is, it's an identity standard, and so it lives separate from the registry. So you could add a bunch of metadata to that entity, and it's not like locked into that registry. And uh, so what we do is we just have an attribute that you add to that identity um, with a JSON blob with all the metadata. We store that blob on IPFS, and, uh, and, and that way the metadata is on IPFS, but it's just uh, you know, the hash that's anchored on chain. And with that, I think we're going to have to call it a session. All right. Thanks, everyone.